Christian last time and he was crying and crying. He couldn't stop crying all the time. Every time he read his book, it, the rucksack on his back got heavier and heavier to carry. He was so tired and worn out. Even his own family didn't understand. And he just stood still. He didn't know where to go. What can I do to be saved? What can I do to be rescued? He kept crying out. Suddenly a man who was called Evangelist appeared. And he asked Christian, Why are you crying? Why are you crying? Well, every time I read this book, I realise I'm going to die and then face the judgment. But I don't want to die. And I can't give a good reason for the life I've lived, for all the wrong things I've done. And every time I think about this, the rucksack gets heavier. It feels like it's going to break my back and pull me down and down and down into hell. Evangelist gave him a scroll and on it was written, Run from the anger that's to come. Christian said, well, I would, but I don't know where to run. Which direction do I go? Left, right, backwards, forwards, where do I go? An evangelist said, do you see the gate at the end of the field? No, I can't see that. Well, do you see the light over there? I think I can just about see that, Christian said. Well, then run towards the light. Just keep following the light. Just don't turn anywhere else. Just run towards that light and you'll find a gate. When you get to that gate, knock on the gate and you'll be told what you have to do. So later on that day, Christian ran. He ran. He started running as fast as he could out of the city of destruction. And everyone came out to watch. Some people started laughing at him. You silly man. Why are you running away? This is the best city to live in. you got money and food and everything here to make you happy. You silly man. Others started shouting. Come back. Come back. Don't leave. Where are you going? Don't leave. Stay here. We're your friends. We love you. We care for you. And then to, on top of everything else, his little boy and his girl came out and they said, Dad, don't leave us. Don't run away. Where are you going? But Christian knew that everything in that city was going to be destroyed. So he put his fingers in his ears. He'd heard about life that lasts forever. And he just put his fingers in his ears to block out every other voice. And he ran. He ran as fast as he could, shouting, life, life, eternal life. That's what I want, life. And he ran towards the light. Two of his neighbours ran after him and they overtook him and they made him stop. One of them was called Mr. Obstinate or Mr. Stubborn. And the other one was called Pliable or Mr. Bendy, we'll call him. And they started trying to persuade Christian to stay. Mr. Stubborn said, why are you running away? Why leave all your friends and all the good things you've got in this world behind? Why give all those up to follow something you can't even see? Christian said, I've heard about something better that lasts forever. Something that doesn't break or rust or get destroyed. A, a, an amazing home in heaven. Amazing blessing and happiness that lasts forever. Here, look, read about it in my book. Everything in this city joined together isn't worth comparing to eternal life. Read it in my book. Obstinate said, I'm not reading that, Mr. Stubborn. I'm not reading that. Get that book away from me. Stupid fool. You give up everything for something you can't see. I'm not going with you. I'm going back home. I'm going back to the city of destruction. That's where I live. I'm not listening to you. You can't even see what you're living for. But Mr. Bendy, 
Pliable said, If Christian is telling the truth, I think I will join him. I believe you. I'm going to join you. Let's go on this journey together. If what you say is true, that there is life that lasts forever and things better than the, those that I know now, I want to come with you. Let's go. Well, we're going to have a quick look back over today's story. And lots of people are asking that question. They don't know what to do with the coronavirus. They don't know where to go, where to get help. Well, the good news is God doesn't leave us alone. When we start to feel our sin, like Christian, he doesn't leave us alone. He sends us help. He sends us evangelists, just like Christian met evangelists. And evangelists are amazing because they point us to Jesus. Evangelists gave Christian a verse from the Bible to help him to run to Jesus, to be saved. And Jesus has eternal life, forgiveness from all our sins, and amazing blessings to give us. And evangelist, evangelists are the ones who point us out and tell us. Mums and dads are amazing evangelists, the first evangelists we meet some of the most important evangelists in our lives who tell us about Jesus. So children, listen to mum and dad when they tell you about Jesus because they can lead you to him and you can know forgiveness and life that lasts forever. Think about some of the other evangelists that Jesus sends you. Think about the evangelists he sent at the moment to call us back to him. Well, Christian had a choice. He could stay in the city of destruction or he could leave for something better and all sorts of different people thought different things about that some of them laughed at him some of them shouted thought he was stupid even his own family thought he was crazy but the promise he knew he would have in Jesus was better than anything else that this world could give and he had that choice he weighed it up do I stay and in the end die and sink into hell or do I leave on the way to life that lasts forever well he chose life what will you choose Jesus says come to me all you who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest Christian couldn't get peace or rest in the city anymore and he wanted Jesus what do you want as you start to follow Jesus, you'll come up against different people in different situations and even thoughts in your own heart and mind. Obstinate is like stubborn. Some people don't want to listen to the Bible. They don't want to listen to Jesus. They'll come up with reasons and they'll try and stop you from following Jesus and say that Jesus isn't real. Jesus is a load of rubbish. And you have to get through that. You have to trust in Jesus and listen to his voice and not them. Some people you meet... And to start with, they might seem like they want to go along with you. They might, oh, I'll, I'll be a Christian with you. That sounds amazing. Well, we're going to see what happens to Pliable later on. But to start with, he started well. We need to pray for other people around us and not to be put off by them. What will you choose? To follow Jesus or to listen to the world around you and turn back? Well, here's some, some things to do. There's reading first and looking at evangelists. Who can be an evangelist? What's an evangelist's job? And then thanking God for the evangelists that he sent to you. Then looking at the world. Who can and who can't accept Jesus and the barriers you might come up against. And then looking at the choice you have. Really think this through carefully. Really pray about this. The choice that you have to follow Jesus or to not follow Jesus. And then you can add these characters onto your map just outside the city of destruction. And then there's a couple of extra things for you to do there. Maybe think of some other evangelists in the Bible. Think about how they're all different and yet their job is the same to tell people about Jesus. And maybe pray and ask Jesus of somebody that you could tell about him. See you next time.